Um, I'd like to take the opportunity to make the board aware of the passing of one of our employees. It's with heavy hearts across Union County that this morning we learned of the passing of Megan Burnett. Megan was a valued employee at our Marshall Library branch. Um, and unfortunately, she was involved in the tragic accident that occurred on Highway 74 yesterday. She had been working with us for six years. And while it's difficult to provide comfort, when those who knew Megan are searching for understanding amidst the, uh, this unexpected loss, our thoughts and prayers are with Megan's family members, friends, colleagues in the library system and across our organization. And if I could ask everyone to observe a moment of silence and remember Megan and her family at this time, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll open the uh, Monday, August 19th, 2019 Board of County Commissioners meeting. And uh, as usual, we'll begin with our invocation. And uh, Commissioner Rape, I believe you can help us with that. Thank you. If you would care to bow your heads. Our Heavenly Father, I come before you today a sinner saved by grace. I ask for your blessings on all of the law enforcement people in this country, all of our military, both here and abroad. I ask that you give all public officials in this great country wisdom to do right in your sight. I also ask for your blessings on us today as a commission to make the right decisions for our citizens of Union County. Amen. And let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we have uh, some opportunity for employee recognition. And uh, our first is the 2019 Digital County Survey Top 10 Award. And Michelle, if you'll uh, help yes, us there, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Senator, Center for Digital Government and the National Association of Counties recently announced the Union County Information Technology Department has been granted the honor of being a winner in the 16th anniversary Digital County Survey in our population demographic. This survey identifies best technology practices among U.S. counties, including initiatives that streamline the delivery of government services, encourages collaboration and shared services, enhance cybersecurity, and contribution to disaster response and recovery efforts. This afternoon, I'd like to recognize our IT director, Carl Lucas, and his team. Carl, if you'd like to come up. we have a certificate yes the entire team should come up absolutely in this account. So I've experienced the expertise and professionalism that this group has demonstrated over the years. And I don't think there's anyone that deserved it any more than one. Thank you very much.
our next award for outstanding achievement in popular annual financial reporting. Michelle, if you'll help us with that as well. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada, GFOA, has given an award for outstanding achievement in popular annual financial reporting to Union County for its popular annual financial report for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2018. This award is a prestigious national honor recognizing conformance with the highest standards for preparation of state and local government popular reports. This is our, um, is valid for one year and we have received this recognition for the past five years. And I believe that Ms. Christy Climbing Bear played a large role in this along with the rest of the finance team. I recognize Jeff Yates and Ms. Climbing Bear and other staff to come up and receive your award. As Christy and the chairman make their way forward, I, um, I want to recognize Christy and her efforts in this. One of our commitments in this process is to transparency. And Christy stepped up a couple of years ago to do this project, and it was a little bit of a stretch project for her, and she just um, did an excellent job with it. So this is a um, communications tool. It's the Citizens Annual Popular Financial Report. So we just want to recognize her and the hard work that she did. Next, we have another recommend, uh, recognition, recognition of professional achievement. Van Harrell, if you will come up and help us with that, please. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Um, we are here to recognize one of our staff members in the tax office today, uh, <coughs> Jody. If you come up. Um, the IAAO is what we refer to as the International Association of Assessing Officers. There are professional membership organization um, and this international, there's, they were established in 1934 and they have over 7,000 members worldwide. They provide the industry standards for training, uh, appraisal standards and, and staff development internationally for people in our, our roles. There is a, one of the designations is the Residential Evaluation Specialist designation or RES. <clears throat> It is the equivalent to those designations awarded by the American Society of Appraisers and the Appraisal Institute, which governs fee appraisal work. Um, Jody, in earning this designation, um, it required her to complete 172 hours of classroom instruction, including seven different courses followed by a comprehensive exam in each course, an eight-hour case study exam, and a four-hour master exam. She completed those requirements with a great sigh of relief. <laughs> in July. Um, we'd like to recognize Jody. I think you have a uh, certificate to present her with. Um, she is the first appraiser in Union County's history to receive this as designation. So <clears throat> just like to congratulate Jody. And the rest of our appraisal staff is here as well um, and to, to honor her as well. Um, in addition to this, we have several other appraisers, including Jody, that have received their state uh, certification. So I'd like to recognize all of them for their hard work and achievement, but especially Jody on this designation. Next item on the agenda is employee recognition for years of service. And we have a number this evening. Uh, first we have, with five years, we have Ch Jerry Davis, Building Code Enforcement. Tranya Helms, Sheriff's Office. Haley Williams with the Sheriff's Office, all with five years. With 10 years, we have Gail Hone with Health. Advanda Sturden uh, with health for 10 years. And with 15 years, we have John Amal, Sheriff's Office, and Jonathan Presson with the Sheriff's Office. With 20 years, we have Lita Perez with 20 years, and 
Jonathan Crowder, excuse me, Louder, for the Sheriff's Office for 25 years. Uh, we have a number of uh, retirements in August. Tina Sharon with Social Services for 23 years. And Lillian Baharas with Health Department with 16 years. And Lewis Grote with Solid Waste for six years. We extend our appreciation for the years of service and dedication to Union County and we thank them for their service. Next item we have is inform informal comments. We've had no one sign up for informal comments. So we'll move on to additions, deletions, and adoptions of the agenda. Are there any additions, deletions? I have a motion to accept the agenda as presented. Motion to accept. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. uh, next we have the consent agenda. A motion to, right, we have a motion to approve the consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next item is item 32, our old business. And the first item is CZ 2019-006, Poplin Meadows Phase 2. And Lee... Just to give you a recap on this, this is a townhome development off Poplin Road. Um, it's limited to uh, 70 townhome units, density is 5.98 dwelling units per acre. Uh, the planning board in July voted to um, recommend uh, approval of this rezoning request. Uh, the board noted that the development was an extension of the already approved Poplin Meadows development <clears throat> and that the lessening of density was appropriate in this case. Um, the board also noted that they felt this was a good use of the property. Um, some of the dissenting members did note that they felt that the density of the development was too high. Um, it would negatively impact the schools and would negatively impact the transportation network. Um, board of Commissioners, um, if, if the uh, first August meeting uh, conducted a public hearing to receive input from nearby residents. Um, the board did hear a presentation from the applicant um, and had one person speak in opposition to the project. Um, that person's primary concern was that their issue was a lack of adequate uh, sewer infrastructure in the area. Um, conditions that go along with this project are that the development um, is subject to the concept plan with the revision date of June 6, 2019, and elevations is submitted as part of the conditional rezoning application. Um, the site may be devoted only to a residential community containing a maximum of seven for sale single family attached residential units or townhomes um, <clears throat> and any in incidental and accessory uses relating thereto that are allowed in the R4 zoning district. The petitioner shall provide a minimum of five acres of open space as generally shown on the rezoning plan and the project will require stormwater detention, no, I'm sorry, the project will require stormwater detention and water quality measures in accordance with the Union County's, with accordance with Union County's cluster development option, and the development is subject to all other applicable requirements of the Union County Development Ordinance, as well as all other local, state, and federal requirements. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Are there any questions for Lee? Do we have a motion? And, and the, the developer is here. I'm sorry if you need to ask him a question. You guys are comfortable with those conditions. Sorry about that. I'll make a motion to approve the amendment of the proposal consistent with the current plan and adopt the consistency statement approving the rezoning petition CZ 2019-006 to rezone the property appearing on the tax map is parcel 07042 010B in Vance Township from RA40 to R4ZZ as consistent with the current plan and approve the rezoning petition CZ 2019 06 to rezone the property from RA40 to R4ZZ and approve the conditions 
as accepted by the applicant. Okay. Any discussion? We have a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next item is CZ 2019-007, the Newtown Ross property. Another project <clears throat> that came before the uh, Board of Commissioners back in August, for the, or in August this month for the public hearing. Um, just to recap, uh, this is a single family uh, residential community off of Newtown Road um, near the intersection of Potter. Um, it's 95 single family homes. Um, it's about, it's 2.9 dwelling units per acre. Uh, planning Board, um, made a unanimous uh, decision, or I'm sorry, the, unanim the planning board voted four to two to recommend approval of this rezoning request. Um, in approving the request, the board noted that the request was consistent with the plan and the development would not have a negative impact on schools. The city members noted that they thought the proposed development was too dense and would negatively impact the transportation network. Um, board of Commissioners conducted a public hearing in August to receive input from nearby residents. Um, the board heard a presentation from the applicant. Um, I believe it does state in your agenda packets that someone uh, spoke in opposition to this one. That was an error. It was in the next one that they spoke in opposition to. There was no opposition to this one. Um, so the, the planning board voted four to two to recommend approval. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Okay. The applicant, I'm sorry, the Mr. applicant Russian. is here and I believe they're comfortable with all these conditions. Um, and that is in the Parkwood School District, is that correct? Yes, sir, it is in the Parkwood. And let me, let me read through these conditions really quickly. Um, the development is subject to the concept plan with a revision date of July 26, 2019. <clears throat> and the elevations is submitted as part of the conditional rezoning application. Uh, the site may be devoted only to a residential community containing a maximum of 95 for sale single family residential units and any incidental and accessory, use, accessory uses relating thereto that are allowed in the R4 zoning district. The petitioner shall provide a minimum of 10 acres of open space as generally shown on the rezoning plan. Uh, the project will require stormwater detention and water quality <coughs> measures in accordance with Union County's cluster development option. Um, tree preservation areas are based upon the original setbacks as required in RA40, thus the tree preservation areas are 40 feet in the front, 40 feet in the rear, and 15 feet on the sides. And the development is subject to all other requirements of the Union County Development Ordinance, as well as all other local, state, and federal requirements. And as I stated, the developer is here. Please come to work all those conditions. It is 32 point something acres. Yeah, yes, sir. And uh, you've got how many entrances for 95? There is one entrance off of Newtown. There's also um, a dedicated Stubb Street uh, that will connect to this property um, on Potter Road in the future if it ever develops. But currently, there is one uh, entrance and exit to the development site. And the planning board also noted, and the developer agreed to, and again, this is shown on the conceptual plan, um, a potential, a, a, a right of way for an entry um, at this location as well. To move into another neighborhood. Yes, sir. So you want to build 95 houses on 20 acres, basically. That, that is the request, yes, sir. Commissioner Russian, do you have? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to approve the application and adopt the consistency statement approving the rezoning petition CZ 2019-007 to rezone the properties appearing on tax maps as parcel 06-090-018 and parcel number 06-090-018A and the Sandy Ridge Township uh, the property from RA40 to R4CZ has consistent with the current plan and approved rezoning petition CZ 2019-007 to rezone the property from RA40 to R4CZ and approve the conditions as accepted by the applicant. 
Okay. Any further discussion? Commissioner Simpson. Mr. Chairman, I'll be uh, voting in opposition to this motion. Uh, I've heard a lot of discussion in recent weeks over uh, our move to high density zoning. Um, I think the uh, particular project uh, and where that's located needs to be taken into consideration. It is consistent with our land use plan, but I think in terms of uh, the movement to that much higher density along with traffic issues and concerns. So I just want to make that point and I'll be voting in opposition. And I'll, uh, I'll have to concur with Commissioner Simpson. Uh, I live a little over a quarter mile from this and uh, I think when it was presented it was 2017 traffic patterns and I can tell you personally the volumes of traffic in that area has increased dramatically uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, the other piece is that I do have a concern with, you know, we talked about the entrances going into if it's ever development, uh, ever developed, and with one person, one entrance on this, I have a concern uh, for, uh, you know, if, if we had a structure fire at the beginning of that and had some other issue, uh, you couldn't get couldn't get past get into the development or get out of it. Uh, so uh, I, I agree that the, the density issue is, is my, one of my major concerns. Uh, also, uh, I know that I have, I'm on CARPO, which is the transportation board, and you know, there's really no relief for Potter's Road or the avenues in and out of this area. It's very congested, and we're looking at years away, and then on top of that, we will find out in October where the Monroe Road's going to be widened to give you some access. So uh, I just don't think the high density uh, in this area is, is, uh, is appropriate for the future citizens of Union County. Any other discussion? We have a motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? No. Aye. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. Before moving on, I'd suggest that the chair entertain a motion to deny the application, given the action the board just took. You want to do a formal motion to deny? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll make a motion to deny the application, adopt the consistency statement rejecting the rezoning petition CZ 2019-007 to rezone the property appearing on tax map as parcel 06. 009-018 and parcel 06-009-018. Sir. sir, can I finish, please? We wanted to try to request a deferral of the deferred discussion. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. We wanted to request, the applicant wanted to request a deferral of both the further discussion. All right, I hear, I hear your request. Let me finish by. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Parcel 06009018A in the Sandy Ridge Township, the property from RA40 to R4ZZ, and to deny rezoning petition of CZ 2019-007 to rezone the property to R from RA40 to R4ZZ. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor for the motion to deny? Aye. All in favor? Against? All in, against the motion? Okay. Okay. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is CZ 2019-009, Poplin Meadows Phase 3. Lee? Yes, sir. <coughs> This is the third um, item that came before you um, at the first meeting in August. Uh, the planning board voted four to three to recommend approval of this rezoning request. Uh, the board noted that this development was an extension of the already approved Poplar Meadows and that the density, lessening of density as you moved away from the previously approved sections was appropriate. Uh, the board also noted that they felt this was a good use of the property. The dissenting members noted that they felt that the density of this development was too high, it would negatively impact the schools, and would negatively impact the transportation network. 
Um, a public hearing was held um, on August 5th to receive input from nearby property owners. There was one um, person who spoke in opposition, not necessarily to the project, but to um, uh, projects in general that were increasing density to R40 and from R40 to and RE40 to something uh, more dense. Um, this is a 99 unit townhome development. The density is 4.85 dwelling units per acre. Um, the conditions are as follows. The development is subject to the concept plan with a date of May 31st, 2019 and elevation submitted as part of the conditional rezoning application. The site may be devoted only to a residential community containing a maximum of 99 for sale single family attached residential units and any incidental and accessory uses relating thereto that are allowed in the R4 zoning district. The petitioner shall provide a minimum of nine acres of open space as generally shown on the rezoning plan. <clears throat> the project will require stormwater detention and water quality measures in accordance with, the, with Union County's cluster development option. And the development will be subject to all other applicable requirements of the Union County Development Ordinance as well as all other local, state, and federal requirements. Uh, the developer, the developer is here and is in agreement with those conditions. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? I'll make a motion to approve the application. It's consistent with the uh, area. To adopt the consistency statement, approving the rezoning petition CZ 2019-009 to rezone the property appearing on tax map as parcel 07042010 in the Vance Township, the property from RA40 to R4CZ as consistent with the current plan and approve the rezoning petition CZ 2019-09 to rezone property from RA40 to R4CZ and approve the conditions as accepted by the applicant. Any discussion? We have a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next item we have is, uh, and our new business is critical intersection analysis report. Bjorn, I think uh, you're going to help us with this. Thank you, Chairman Helms, members of the board, Mr. Watson. I'm here to present the results of a critical intersection analysis report that was uh, initiated about six months ago uh, at your direction. This is a follow-up from a 2016 report that has been very successful in helping guide county, municipal, and CDOT efforts to help improve intersections throughout Union County based on uh, focus on safety and congestion issues. About two thirds of the 15 intersections have been funded over that time. And so we uh, felt it was appropriate to revisit this list and come up with a, a new candidate list of projects. So this is a map of all the funded intersection projects. If you pay attention to the Facebook feed for the county, it seems like every week we're, we're getting information from the NCDOT for a new project that's kicking off. There are um, at least two intersection projects currently underway um, in the county. A couple others have recently been completed over the summer. Um, these are all funded for the next two to three years. And there has been a trend of municipalities and the county contributing to the cost of these projects. And so there is a, a, a broad base of support to um, partner on these as it goes through the NCDOT and CARPO funding streams to try and get them implemented. And these are overwhelmingly on two-lane roads. Uh, that's consistent with what we're seeing happen. These roads aren't getting widened, but there are issues, particularly the intersections. And uh, due to both safety and congestion issues, these projects are getting funded. So we went through a, a robust public outreach process. I've uh, reached over 700 Union County residents who completed the survey throughout the county. Uh, got a lot of policy level information as well as uh, recommendations for where to look at intersection issues. Uh, first question, do they know that Union County doesn't own or maintain roads? Over half didn't know that. 
Uh, do you support county or municipal money being used to help acceler accelerate project delivery? Three quarters said yes if it helps get them funded sooner, which is the case typically. What should we focus on with our prioritization process? Uh, safety was most important, and second was congestion, and that's reflected in our prioritization process we used here. And then uh, we had to ask about roundabouts because we have a lot of them here. We're going to have more. Uh, over 90% were comfortable driving through a roundabout, and almost that same number thought they helped improve intersections. And then some information about suggested improvements for congestion as well as what kind of uh, population we were reaching. Was it people who have just moved here or people who have been here their whole lives? And we felt that we did get a, a wide range of respondents, both in terms of uh, their, their length of time living here, also where they live within the county. So we were pretty happy about that. Do you have any questions about this slide? Okay. So we looked at over 50 intersections based on um, what we at the staff level from the municipalities, the county, and the NCDOT identified, as well as from uh, citizen input. We cut these into half, with the green ones being the top half, which we then were able to submit to the NCDOT, at, who are an active partner in this process, for their congestion and safety analysis unit to be able to pull the five-year crash data and tell us, well, what's going on at these intersections, which normally would cost upwards of $500 to $1,000 per intersection per report. And the fact they did it for us, um, because we were working with the NCDOT on this process, was a great help. So we got these results, and then that helped us filter which intersections to come up with our top 15. All but one of these intersections we looked at are on um, two-lane roads. So what we came up with through this process is this map here. There are 15 intersections throughout the county. I believe eight municipalities are represented, so that was great that just going through an objective process, we were able to get a good um, representation throughout the county. Twelve of them are on the federal aid system, which is important because that's what makes them eligible for federal funding through CARPO and uh, some NCDOT sources. The others would be eligible for safety money only through the NCDOT. An example of that would be Joe Carr and Marvin or um, Potter and Parkwood School down towards uh, south of Waxhaw. Uh, safety was the most important criteria we used with congestion second, and uh, again, we have eight municipalities represented in this list. Do you have any questions about this map? Any questions? Okay. And so based on this, inf uh, on this draft report that we had available in June that went out for a public comment period, CARPO issued a very abbreviated solicitation for local planning projects to uh, use a, a one-time infusion of about $600,000 in planning funds that were available. We responded for um, design and cost estimation work for each of these 12 intersections that are eligible. We offered it to them as a either all or half type of proposal. We said if we do all of them, it would be a $300,000 application, 20% being paid for by the locals. That money was in the budget for this year. Or if they're looking to spread the projects around and 300000 is too much to give to us, we could do half of them for 150000 and they elected to give us uh, um, six projects worth, or 150, and since it's an 80% match, they really gave us 120,000 with us eligible or responsible for the other 30,000. These are the six intersections that were the, the top ones that we would look to design through this process. And by design, I mean what is the traffic engineering solution to deal with the issue here? Is it realigning the intersections? Is it a roundabout? Is it turn lanes? And then coming up with cost estimates based on that, which we could then use for grant applications in the future. And we've worked with these municipalities, all but Unionville, have committed to including money for the local match requirement to partner with the county in this process. So we're pleased with that, that out of the 30,000, potentially only 15 to 20 would be the county's responsibility. And we have um, worked with the NCDOT. We currently have an RFQ available or not available, in their hands for their review. Once they ab agree with the terminology and the uh, provisions in it, we're able to um, put that out for advertisement uh, based on your approval of the receipt of this money. So the three actions requested of you is to first approve the report and the recommendations, which is primarily the list of intersections. Secondly, um, approve the receipt of the $120,000 in what's called PL funds from CARPO to initiate this grant for design and cost estimation. 
and then lastly to allow us to work on interlocal language to work with the municipalities to allow us to invoice them for whatever they contribute to the local match for this um, $150,000 grant, which we expect to be complete by May of 2020. And so I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Questions? I have one. Do you have, do you have a list? Of, there was 15. Do you yes, have sir. A, you've got a list of the six. Do you have a list of the remaining? Uh, just this map. Just I don't map. have a list, just the map that's here. Okay, and how many of the six are you replacing stoplights? Let's see. I know there's several I recognize in like 84 and Rocky River. 84 and Rocky, well this isn't necessarily replaced because the design for 84 and Rocky River could just be more turn lanes and the signal would remain. So I can't answer that question of whether a signal would be removed because based on the design and traffic engineering, it could, the answer could be a roundabout, it could be more turn lanes with the signal remaining. Sutherland and Walkup signalized, Lawyers and Stephen Mills signalized, Potter and Forest Lawn, I'm no, not, it's not sure. So about half are signalized, but how many would be removed? I can't answer that question. Okay. So your, mo your, your request is for us to proceed with this planning. That's right, to come up with the design to say what's the, this, this study would tell us what's the effective solution to this intersection as opposed to in periods past, which you can attest to, you just get told after the fact from the NCDOT, this is what we're gonna do here. This is a way for us to have input in the Good. process. Now, of course, we can't approve a design that the NCDOT says, it's not gonna work, we're not gonna build this because we aren't building those intersections. This is a cooperative effort with them, but it allows us to weigh in. If we're given some options, we would have a lot more input than we would in, in the past. And also, once we're done with this work, these applications are gonna be far more competitive for um, funding because we've done our homework. Okay. I make a motion we uh, approve the report and recommendations presented. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Bjorn. Uh, the two and three as well. Huh? For the uh, authorizing us to accept the funds and then the yes. interlocal. That's part of the yes. action. Okay. Next, we have a legislative update. And uh, Michelle, if you'll assist us with that, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to provide a brief update on where we are with our 2019 long session legislative agenda. I'll remind the board and, and those uh, watching that we had two guiding principles for our legislative agenda and working with the legislature. The first was su to support legislative efforts that protect and or enhance local government's revenues and or increase local funding flexibility. And second, to oppose any unfunded mandates and any initiatives that fail to fully fund services shifted to county responsibility. I would remind the board that um, we are at a budget impasse. The legislature is actually still in session and it's been there quite a while, basically since October of 2018. Um, and its activity currently is somewhat light as they continue to try to work through their budget um, issues that are, that are before them. We do continue to monitor legislative activities and provide input where there are things that we believe impact uh, the county either positively or, or negatively, although that is, again, somewhat light. We had four primary goals and an additional goal that got added at our legislative breakfast that I'll go through and let you know where we, where we landed on those. We had a, a fairly, I think, good session so far. In terms of transportation, we had an item to seek legislation that strengthens Union County's influence regarding transportation projects within our county limits. The Senate included language in the budget to provide for a study committee of this issue. Again, the budget is at an impasse, so there is no adopted budget. However, that language is in the budget as it, as it sits currently. For economic development, we had an item to seek legislation that clarifies statutory language regarding when a public hearing is required for economic development purposes. We did have this adopted as session law and in June, of tw uh, June 28, 2019, so that was successful in terms of something that our economic development director was looking for. We had a, a piece of legislation that we sought on hunting limitations. 
we sought local legislation that would make it unlawful to take or attempt to take wildlife on the land of another while under the influence of an impairing substance. We did achieve this local legislation request. Uh, session Law 2019-262 was signed in June and is effective October 1st of 2019. And this is a piece of legislation that we will work with our communication team to communicate this change. And this is a local law, so applicable to Union County. And we were successful with that request as well. Our, our last um, primary goal was around system development fees. And we were seeking legislation that clarifies the statutory language regarding the collection of system development fees, specifically regarding the timing of collection. We've gone back and forth on numerous iterations trying to get something um, that would achieve this goal for us without any success at this point, but we'll, we continue to work on that and, and you'll probably see that come up again in future legislative sessions if we don't get any relief. At our legislative breakfast, you will recall that we had an additional request from the sheriff regarding road closures during emergency declarations. We were successful in achieving that goal as well. Um, that change in law was ratified and became law um, on June the 27th of 2019. I would like to thank each of you. I know you've talked to delegation members and, and specifically our delegation for the work that they've done on our behalf and continue to do. And I will keep you updated if there are any changes that are important to the county before they leave session, hopefully. Happy to take any questions. Any questions? Commissioner Rushing. Um, on the hunting legislation, did, did it make the book or did we find out if it actually made it into the it hasn't, but I actually think because it's not effective until October 1st, I think it will be there, but we're following up on that. And we're going to do our own communication as well. Yeah, and it's real important that we do that because the hunters that begin this deer season, they'll, they'll need to know, and it won't be in the book. Uh, most counties that have it, they have it up like Stanley, for example, have it in the book already. So as, as the hunters are reading through the regulations and local legislation, they won't know that that's in place unless we tell them. Right, and we're following up on that. I think it's just a timing issue, but we'll also do our own communication. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, we'll move on to item 37, receive an update concerning the recent general obligation bond issue. And Jeff Yates, if you'll come help us with that, please, sir. Good afternoon, Commissioners, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to come and report out the, the county sold bonds on August 6th, um, geo bonds to the tune of about a hundred and um, five million, give or take. So I just wanted to come and report the results of that. It was a great day in the market for us. Um, I know everyone around the country was kind of wringing their hands, but on a down market day, it's beneficial to those that are selling bonds. So uh, the first part of that was about 15.2 million in refunding bonds that, um, refunded a portion of our debt that was variable rate that was left over from the uh, mid-2000s time frame. We were able to generate a savings of about $845,000. Or on a present value basis, that's about 4.5%, almost 4.6%. So that was um, good to the, uh, to the taxpayers of Union County because that reduced that debt cost over time. Plus that limits our exposure in the variable rate market. So we managed to fix the rate out at a great time in the market. The other piece is we issued about $91 million of new geo bonds. These were the voter approved bonds from 2016 as well as the ones from 2018. These were primarily for the UCPS uh, transportation facility, about four, hundred, about four million, a little over 10 million for the library, um, right around 40 million for the community college, about 42 million for public safety projects, which include both the sheriff's office renovation and the 911 uh, emergency center. And then about, um, I'm sorry, that's a total of about 91 million. We were able to generate about $12 million in premium, 12 and a half million. Um, of that, about just under $5 million is committed to the um, SPCC project. The remainder, we are working with our management team to look at how that's best going to benefit our debt portfolio and our projects that are sitting out there. Keeping in mind that that money is restricted and can only be used for the specific purposes and or debt service. Um, so that's a positive um, for the county. We'll be paying debt service on about, um, like I said, about 90 million, and it fit within our debt projection. So we were able to maximize our issuance and our debt savings over time. So it was just a really good day in the market, and I wanted to come back to you and kind of give you an update and tell you where we were on that. It pretty much eliminates all of our authorized but unissued, with a small portion um, being remain, uh, remaining um, unissued, but it's pretty negligible. So 
Um, with that, I'll open it up to you for any questions you may have. Any questions for Jeff? It's not the first time this has happened under your department, so we appreciate the diligence of your department and what they do for the county. Thank you. And I will point out, um, in case you're wondering, the on the geo debt we were paying just over two percent so we were able to issue 20 year debt at just over two percent which is um, i know the lowest i've seen in 20 years um, i don't know frank if you have if you've seen two percent on 20 year note or 20 year bond so it's pretty amazing for the county and we'll call you when i need to do that mortgage in the new house <laughs> thank you thank you very much appreciate it next we have uh, county managers comments Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A uh, couple of items. Uh, one, a reminder to the board and to members of the public that the Board of County Commissioners has a planning retreat scheduled um, later this month on the 28th and 29th. Uh, will be held at the uh, Agricultural Center um, and will begin at 8.30. Is that right, Brian? 8.30 in the morning. Uh, the 28th is devoted uh, to uh, hearing from municipalities and the 29th will be a facilitated discussion um, of the board and staff concerning uh, direction on the uh, updating the comprehensive land use plan. Uh, so we look forward to that. We've heard back from all of the municipalities at this point and staff has been in contact with them regarding uh, the information they'll be presenting uh, we'll be looking forward to hearing what their plans are for growth and development in their respective communities second is uh, it it's uh, my pleasure to uh, publicly announce that uh, we have received a, a uh, uh, another national recognition um, the uh, and this has to do with our reservoir uh, the reservoir that's being uh, filled right now at our Catawba uh, River water treatment plant has been named the best water environment project by engineering news record southeast it's a regional publication uh, that announces winners of the best construction projects every year and our reservoir has uh, won that award. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the reservoir, uh, it is a, uh, an enhancement that's been made uh, at our Catawba River water treatment plant. The reservoir will hold one billion, with a B, gallons of raw water. It encompasses 92 acres. It sits on a, actually on a bluff above the Catawba River. Uh, this reservoir will provide a consistent supply of wall, raw water to the treatment plant, not only during drought, uh, but when water quality conditions in the river make it uh, make treatment difficult or impossible, such as uh, when high sediment contents from rain-induced runoff or chemical uh, spills or floods uh, happen or spills happen uh, upstream. Uh, I'll remind the board that uh, we've all been invited to a ribbon cutting on October the 23rd at 2 p.m. That information's already been sent and I believe it's on your calendars. And third, I'd like to uh, make you aware of a very special event that occurred on Friday. Um, Friday, our human services group um, particularly the, uh, the human services uh, employees uh, out of DSS that deal with foster children held an event, uh, hosted an event over at our human services building. And I think this is, um, this is one of the benefits of having the facility that we now have. Uh, we hosted that event. There were nine other counties, uh, DSS agencies that participated and the, the event was um, hosted to uh, help uh, those foster children, those older foster children between the ages of 17, I mean the 13 and 17, uh, to understand and gain some um, insight into what it takes to live independently, how to manage your money, the things that they will be encountering as they grow older, 
and they age out of the foster care system. Uh, we had 85 foster children there, again, from nine different counties. Um, our staff did a remarkable job of putting this program together. It was called Keeping It Real. I'll just lit, uh, read off some of the uh, individual uh, agencies and local businesses that uh, participated. Brandon Reeves Auto World, uh, Central Idaho Workforce Development Board, the Community Development Center, uh, the local chapter of Delta Sorority, Griffin State and Insurance, United States Marine Corps, Monroe Police Department, North Carolina Cooperative Extension, NC Reach, NC Shifts, NC Works, SPCC, Thompson's Children's Home, Turning Point, the Union County Board of Elections, Union County Public Health, Union County Sheriff's Office, Union County Transportation Department, United States Census, Wingate University, Youth Tobacco Resources, and the Zeta Sorority Chapter of Monroe. And the purpose of this, again, was to uh, give them some real-world examples about what it's going to be like uh, to become independent, financially independent, and self-supporting as they age out. Um, they were they put through a scenario, a day-long scenario, where they were uh, presented with a, uh, a situation where they were said, okay, here's how much money you have and there were different stations set up around the room and they had to determine the cost, you know, how much they were gonna spend on clothes and how much they were gonna spend on transportation and health care. Uh, Brandon Reeves had some cars out in the parking lot. They had to go uh, negotiate with a car salesman for transportation. Uh, so it was real world, of course, that was the title of the this process. The, uh, the program was keeping it real but uh, we got a lot of great reviews on that. Uh, it, was a, it was good exposure for Union County. Um, I would like to recognize Michelle Lancaster, some of the, I see Janet Payne, Jackie Morgan here from Human Services. Uh, we have a number of other individuals with Human Services that are not here today that uh, deserve uh, recognition, but I think that um, with our new building, uh, in our new management structure, the, in, the uh, employees uh, in human services and the supervisors have uh, the flexibility and the, uh, to use their creativity in this way. It was a tremendous program that will reap benefits uh, for the future, and I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Well, thank you, sir. Commissioner Aikmas. I have no comments. Commissioner Rushing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this week, just to give you an idea with this hunting issue, we're about to, hunting season starts in just a couple of weeks, uh, so we'll have a lot more interactions between hunters and homeowners, and especially people who are not used to hearing gunfire uh, in and around their homes. Uh, hunting, our ethics in hunter, as hunters preserve our opportunity to hunt. We talk about that in our hunter education class. Uh, we have basically one wildlife officer that handles this whole county. Uh, so the other day we're teaching a hunter safety class at the Agriculture Center and, and we volunteered to help him do that. And uh, lucky we were there because he had a prisoner transfer of, a, of an American alligator that was found in the Weddington area and brought to uh, him there so he could transport it around the state. And um, finally I think it ended up back here in Union County but it's going to be transferred to uh, South Carolina or somewhere soon. Um, this. This hunting um, incidents thing that we have going on, uh, you know, he tells me stories and, we, and, and there's incidents that happen in this county of people who have their young child hauling beer to the tree stand, uh, things like that, that, that are really uh, important that we, we're not impaired in our judgment when we're using a firearm, especially in, in, in the conditions uh, where we have uh, a lot of homes now that we're used to not having before. So it is a really important thing for him, and it's important for us to help him and help uh, the Wildlife Commission uh, be able to identify people who are doing things in the wrong manner. Uh, when, they, when they take animals illegally at night, things like that, they're stealing from all of us. They're not just stealing, they're not just killing an animal illegally, they're taking from all of us because they belong to all of us. And uh, we're allowed to harvest them based on that, and it's held in trust by the uh, state. So uh, again, be, be ready for that to happen. Another thing that happened in JCPC this week, uh, Juvenile Crime Prevention Council is, you know, we were talking about mentors and the need for mentors 
if anybody's interested in doing that, there's some opportunities available through uh, organizations that work with JCPC. And uh, we really were just talking about how good this program is working with the school system and that the county, that, that thing that we funded where, where we're working with the uh, 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 social sure. services department with, uh, and, and working together with the law, law enforcement, DSS, and with the school system, with counselors, and, and how, how that's really becoming a, a good success. So uh, if anybody's interested in doing that, uh, JCPC, uh, Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, will be glad to have your help. And that's all. Thank you. Commissioner Simpson. Further comments? Okay. Commissioner Rick. No comment. Uh, I just want to point out, when, before we get, began our meeting, we had uh, a picture taken. A young lady was Nikki Tuttle, very special young lady. She uh, uh, is very active in 4-H and a high, very high achiever. She's, as a matter of fact, I can't articulate the award she won recently, but she's a leader in 4-H in the state of North Carolina. The other piece is that she is the president of the Young Republicans Club, uh, and it's, that's not important as much as the fact no matter what your politics is, to have young people involved and that active, uh, it's very impressive. Uh, Commissioner Rape and I will be attending the, the uh, North Carolina Association of County Commissioner meetings where we set a lot of agendas that go before our legislature. And for the past four years, I've had the, four years plus really, had the pleasure of, of meeting with Nikki, meeting with young people that, that are working in the same group She'll be there Friday night for a dinner uh, for young people to tell us older politicians, you know, what they're thinking too. So I, I, I just wanted to recognize Nikki. She's, uh, I hate she'd already left, but uh, let the people in, in Union County know what a, what a strong, positive influence this young lady is. She's also a very accomplished softball player too, I believe. So. But uh, I appreciate that. And uh, Mark, I, th I thank you for your comments about the DHS and what they're doing for the young people. I just ask if, uh, if it's a model that we could share with our school system because it's not just the people that are aging out of DHS that need those skills. All our young people, we don't, we don't teach, that, teach that as a basis. And that's just a public, private editorial. And I apologize. But I was going to have a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. All in favor? Uh, thank you very much.